What's going on, everybody? It has been a very busy couple of days here in Flowery Branch with the Atlanta Falcons organization. Let's start off. This is the news, I think, of the NFL world over the past three, four days since the legal legal tampering window opened up on Monday. We're recording this on Thursday. Kirk Cousins came in yesterday on Wednesday and signed a four-year deal worth up to $180 million, $100 million guaranteed to become the Falcons' next starting quarterback here in Atlanta. Arch, just what were your overall initial thoughts and impressions, not just not about Kirk Cousins specifically, but about this move and what it yeah, and what it meant for this organization to do this. Well, as soon as Tori, as soon as we realized who and what we were gonna try to be offensively under Raheem Morris, obviously Zach Robinson comes over you get that blend of what uh, the McVay system is, the Shanahan system. So you start thinking, you start churning, okay, 11 personnel, 12 personnel. You start thinking about how that fits and what quarterbacks fit into kind of that mold. Yeah. And it's it's guys that can move around and buy time, but it's not guys that are running all over the place. It's guys that are throwing the ball on time, understand and can process. And remember, that was a word – that Raheem Morris used from the beginning. When yeah. we get a quarterback, he's going to be a guy that's going to process and make decisions quickly. Yeah. I mean, who makes better decisions than a guy like Matt Stafford, a guy like Kirk Cousins? I mean, those are the kind of guys that I started visualizing. So you start thinking, okay, who's available? Well, I didn't even know Kirk was going to be available because it looked like the Vikings we're going to probably bring him back. Justin Jefferson was adamant about the fact that, hey, this guy's my quarterback. I want him back. I mean, why would Jordan Jefferson want, right. or why would Jordan Addison want anything else either, right? And the reports are that they did try. Yeah. They did try, and Atlanta just kind of made a, a bigger offer. And and sometimes that's how it yeah, goes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the bid does come down to the bag a little right, bit, doesn't yeah, it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and Mr. Blank said, whatever it's going to take, I want to be competitive. You guys decide who that guy is and go get him. Mm-hmm. And give Mr. Bank credit. They're, they're, I mean, look at the facilities out here. Look at what he's spent throughout his tenure as, as the owner of this football team. He's never pulled back and said, oh, we can't do that or can't do this. Tell me what you need and we'll do it. Yeah. I think it, for me it was very, very interesting because you're looking at this quarterback market, and I'm talking whether it's a trade, free agency, or the draft. And all of these options are on the table for the Falcons. And it really did – and I'm not just saying this because Kirk Cousins is in the building now, but it really did feel when you were looking at this market – even up to this last week, that Kirk Cousins, if you're in win-now mode, if you're in the position where you feel like you have the pieces in place to go and win some games, win a division, get to the playoffs, Kirk Cousins was honestly one of the only options I felt like that you could immediately plug in and see results immediately based on his track record of being that guy that you're talking about to give the ball to his playmakers and making sure that there is that accuracy. I was actually looking up something that I thought was really interesting that like over the course of Kirk Cousins' first 12 years in the league, he had a, I want to say, Mm 66.9% completion rate, which for if you're comparing apples and oranges, of course, but that's a better completion percentage than Matthew Stafford's first 12 years in the league and Matt Ryan's first 12 years in the league. And those are two people that – if you're talking about accurate quarterbacks, those are two names that immediately come to mind. Absolutely. So what do you <clears throat> feel like Kirk Cousins, the player? And I know he's coming off an Achilles injury. Yeah. That you have to account for that. You have yeah, to that's, be, that's, that, the that's the elephant part, in the room. Right, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, who's he going to be post-Achilles mm-hmm. rupture and, sure. and surgery? But Kirk Cousins, the player, when you watch him play and you watch him dissect defenses and what's being asked of him, what intrigues you about what he could do with Atlanta? Well, I think the thing that comes out to me is his ability to, and we talk, and I used the word process before, and it's something Raheem is is repeatedly said. Yeah. That that process happens, and I don't mean to overuse the word, but that that begins to happen before you ever get to the field and get on the on on the gridiron for a game. It's happening at practice. It's happening with his ability to know what his players can do around him. Think about the young receivers he's worked with. I mean, Justin Jefferson, good player. Mm-hmm. He was not the best. He was not the best player on his team at LSU. That was Jamar Chase. Right. So all of a sudden he's blossomed into where people talk about him as the best receiver in the league. 
and he gets a lot of credit for that. But let's face it, he's a guy that uh, that help was helped by Kirk Cousins. Yeah. In comes Jordan Jefferson or Jordan Addison last year, and through eight games, he's getting it done. And he ended up having a really good year anyway after Kirk got hurt. But what it what it means to me is his ability to adapt to the people around him. Go back to his days in Washington and the guys he played with in Washington, and I think that might be even more. Uh, profound to me as you begin to look at what he can do. He did it in Washington, through for 4,000 yards, four, three seasons in, in Washington, goes to Minnesota and does the same thing, doesn't miss a beat. Offenses were similar, very similar to what he's going to play in this here. And so it gives me an idea of his ability to adapt to whatever the situation is. I mean, anybody that watched the press conference, and I hope you didn't, if you didn't, go to AtlantaFalcons.com and watch it because – you talk about a guy that is dialed in, and I wrote down three things, uh, Tori, mm-hmm. about him when I was watching the presser. Mm-hmm. Teammate came to mind. He's one of these guys that's a selfless dude that wants to that wants to accentuate his teammates. He wants to. He's on and off the field. Go look at what he's done off the field. If you haven't seen the Netflix series, a quarterback, yeah, that's, phenomenal. Yeah, really, great. Yeah. really gives you an insight into Kirk Cousins. I don't think anybody really knew until that came out. But the teammate concept of it, you know, you're trying to accentuate a guy's abilities. Let me sit down and talk with a guy. He said yesterday in his press conference, I want to sit down with Drake London. I Dr- love that. That was my favorite part of the whole press conference when he said, I want to get into a film room. I want cut-ups of Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bajon Robinson. I want to see every catch that they've made right. in the league. I want to see the catches that they made at Florida, at USC. And I want to sit there and I want to watch it, and then I want to watch it with them. That, to me, was the most compelling exactly. part of – of that press conference. Well, and that was the teammate part of it right. that came out and me, it, to me was, I mean, Drake's got 140 grabs himself in two seasons mm-hmm. here with the Falcons. He wants to sit down and watch everyone with Drake. Then you got to go back to Kyle. Mm-hmm. He wants to do that. He, it, and the other thing that came out was the game plan that he has in his head. He clearly described how he talked about continuity. We need to establish continuity here. That means we got to put the work in. Well, those are easy words to say, but what does that translate to? That means spending time with one another off the field. That means spending time with one another in the film room. That means going out and throwing the ball. And it's not just when the coaches are designing stuff. It's when we when we can get together on our own, whether it's on the field or off the field, to begin to develop this continuity, this synergy between one, between all of us. And then the last part was the, was the was the process or part of it and the decision making, not just in practice or in the but also in the games and in yeah. kind of a combination of those. Those things stuck out to me. Mm-hmm. He talked about privilege, put the work in. Mm-hmm. He talked about you know his little bond there with Kyle briefly, yeah. which was cool. Yeah. Um, I think the guy is a perfect fit. And in talking to Zach a little bit, uh, this is going to be a really uh, we hope is a match made in heaven. We don't want to paint a rosy scenario right. because, like yeah. you said, he's coming off of an injury, uh, and he made his mistakes some mm-hmm. in games. Yeah. But when you look at the numbers. I mean, and they're consistent numbers. Over the last six years, he's a three to one touchdown to interception ratio mm-hmm. guy. He's a guy that um, all time is the eighth rated passer all time against pressure packages mm-hmm. when people come after him. And that concludes there. That calls Steve Young, all these guys, yeah. you know, whoever you want to pick out. He's like eighth all time there. His percentages in play action, and think about the play action opportunities here with B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier. Yeah. His play action numbers are off the charts, are top five since mm-hmm. he's been playing. All these things add up to him being a, an extremely good player and a really good match for what they want yeah. to do. It's really interesting, too, because this was a, a notion that I was toying with right when we first heard that what this contract was going to look like, that Kirk Cousins was coming in and. I was taking a a look just at the big picture of this quarterback room over the course of the last three, four seasons. And something that I I have said recently with Matt Ryan kind of coming out and being like, you know, I'm I'm about to retire and you're kind of thinking about Matt Ryan's career. I feel like I can say this because I feel like I, I hope Falcons fans like can understand what I'm what I mean when I say this, but I feel like this fan base was spoiled with Matt Ryan. For over a decade, you had someone who provided a stability that not every team or organization in the league ever has. I mean, there are there are very few examples of a stability Absolutely. like that Matt Ryan had in Atlanta. But then you lose that stability. You send Matt Ryan to Indianapolis, and I understand why you had to do that, and you, you take that dead money on the chin, and you move forward in order to build something that you wanted and needed to build in order to be successful or what you hope is successful. But during that time, there was instability. 
there what there wasn't this consistency at the quarterback position. I mean, you're talking Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke. Nothing against those guys, but there was a lack of stability in Atlanta at the quarterback position and something they had to have and something they had to insert this offseason was stability. Mm-hmm. Of the options you had on the market, who's more stable than Kirk Cousins? I, I don't know if I could name anybody else. And then you talk about like drafting guys and everything like that. And then you're kind of moving the needle a little bit in the way that you think about the Falcons organization. Are you looking at it as year four of the Terry Fontenot regime? Or are you looking at it as year one of the Raheem Morris regime? That changes the way and the patience that you allow yourself to give this organization. But even in that, it shows you kind of where they are, where they believe they are by going and getting someone who has the stability like a Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and and I think from a fan's perspective, I don't even know if they divide it up like you talked about Mm -hmm. with with, with Terry's tenure or Raheem's tenure or even before Arthur's tenure. They're looking at where are the postseason games. You know, we haven't been to the postseason since 17. And so that might be their dividing line is I don't care who's coaching or playing. That's what I need to see is, is postseason. So what gives you the best opportunity? And f- to do that, there has to be stability, as you're talking about, at the number one position. Let's face it, it's the best, it's the n- hardest position to play in all of yeah. sports is quarterback. Yeah. And the hardest to evaluate, too. Y- exactly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. why you probably don't have one of these scenarios where you're maybe grabbing at a guy here or there. Not saying the Falcons aren't going to draft anybody. Potentially they could. could. They yeah. could potentially draft somebody. But this certainly feels like that we've settled into a guy, hopefully stays healthy, mm-hmm. that he could be the guy for a couple of years. And at some point, maybe you do have a young guy that tutors under him. But but at this point, you've got a talent base here offensively, a young talent base that's still on rookie contracts and all yeah. those kind of things matter. Right. We you gotta you want to go win. You gotta go win. And and this gives you the best opportunity. This was the guy that was ready to win now. Mm-hmm. All right, just when we thought that there wouldn't be (laughs) any more news coming. I know that's, you know, a shot in the dark, thinking that there wouldn't be news during the free agency period. But here we are. (laughs) The Falcons have traded quarterback Desmond Ritter to the Arizona Cardinals for wide receiver Rondell Moore. Straight up player, player swap. Initial thoughts, Arch. What do you got for me? Well, what comes to mind immediately is you knew that you had Drake London at wide receiver. Mm -hmm. You acquired Darnell Moody in in free agency. And now all of a sudden, when you begin to start trying to picture what they're going to look like from a personnel standpoint, need a couple more receivers in the building. Mm -hmm. Um, And so now all of a sudden, here comes a guy, Rondell Moore, who uh, a former second-round draft pick for the Cardinals back in 21. Young guy, can run, make plays. He's a guy that's a space guy. If you're getting the ball in space, he can make you miss. Mm That adds up to kind of the personnel things that we're looking for right. if, for, if for Zach Robinson when he begins to put it together. Um, for Desmond Ritter, a chance to re, re, reboot the system to a certain extent. And I will say this, and let me say this kind of as, a, I guess, an editorial on uh, for him. is yeah. I had a chance to work with Des, as you did, very closely. I, I interviewed Des every week, uh, two or three times during the week. Um, he's a classy dude. You know, he's got a young family. Um, it, it was just a tough situation to come into, kind of learning the job, learning the job on the job, right? Learning the, the game on the job. Um, I thought he handled himself extremely well. You never heard him blame the coaches. You never heard him blame his teammates. He took his benching. Um, twice, a couple, right, you know, yeah. took it, it, it. Nobody likes that. I actually had that happen to me. I was about That's, to ask. That like, stinks. Yeah. That stinks. That you, you, but you have to remember that you represent all the guys in the locker room. You're not just representing yourself. And and he did all that with a classy, classy way of doing it. So I, I hope not with nothing but the best for Desmond. Ritter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I did respect the, and I still do respect the heck out of Desmond Ritter because. We had to ask him the tough Mm -hmm. questions. I mean, turnovers were a problem. And in that situation, I think that there are opportunities for people to lose their head. But I I never felt like Desmond, in every conversation that I had with him, I always felel like the mind was there. Like, and he, the decision making, like, was there. It Mm -hmm. just, like, it was one of those things that it almost, like, didn't translate every single play. And, you know, I, I, I am sympathetic to like what you're talking about the learning the job on the job while you're doing the yeah. job that's difficult to do um but going back to kind of what we were saying about what 
Kirk Cousins provides the Falcons is that there was there was a lack of consistency. And no that's, question. And that's something that you needed, especially because when you're looking at it, the Falcons, it was almost to the point in 2023 where I felt like if someone could just give the playmakers the ball, just give give them the ball, disseminate, get it to Kyle Pitts, get it to Drake London, hit your guys, hand the ball off to Bajon Robinson. This offense has the potential to move the ball and score. And it, it was just tough to see that it couldn't get to that point. And, you know, with, with this whole idea of just a straight-up player swap and the Falcons receiving Rondell Moore, he's someone who I'm very intrigued by because I do think that he fits what the Falcons were kind of missing in the wide receiver room. This was a wide receiver room, like what you said, that Drake London was the only player from 2023 – fully under contract in 2024. They did re-sign Kaderil Hodge, brought him back on another one-year deal. You're feeling out this receiver room, but they're just the way that you know like a Zach Robinson or a way you envision a Zach Robinson offense looking, someone like Rondell Moore, mm-hmm. I think, fits almost exactly what he could be looking for in pass catchers. Yeah, if you go if you go look at some of the if and I've been over the <laughs> ad nauseum over the last three weeks have been looking at tape yeah. of what the Rams do, some of what Minnesota did because of Kirk, uh, some of what even what they did back in Washington. But there's a blend of the McVay Shanahan type system, mm-hmm. and some of the things that Rondell Moore is going to be able to bring to the table are some of the things like there's a play in the playoff game against Detroit that the Rams run where Cooper Cup lines up in the backfield. Mm-hmm. They've got they've got three receivers and a bunch look right. Tight end Higby left, okay? Mm-hmm. So pitcher of the Falcon Falcons lined up with Drake right. and and with Mooney right mm-hmm. and all of a sudden Kyle's tight split left and all of a sudden you look in the backfield, Rondell Moore's in the backfield. Mm-hmm. Okay? Pitts runs a post and Rondell runs a wheel off of him. Now they threw it incomplete to cup for a touchdown and end up having to settle for a field goal. But that's some kind of the ingenuity. Yeah, yeah. Some of the yeah. stuff that some of the stuff that's gonna be available mm-hmm. and some of the things you're gonna look for. So I think that that's that that sends chills down my back. Really, mm-hmm. actually thinking about some of the matchups and things you're going to be able to design with Rondell Moore and his versatility. You're mm-hmm. talking about slot outside yeah. in the backfield, a lot of stuff there. Yeah, and that's honestly like bread and butter for what you envision a Zach Robinson yeah. offense looking like. He loves well, I say the Rams. They love that type of versatility. I mean, you look at Cooper Cup, you look at Puka Nico, like you you look at these guys, absolutely, and they have that versatility, and you see them across the field, everywhere. You see, and I just feel like this is a good a good idea for the Falcons, and the fact that they were able to kind of make this trade work to their advantage to fill a very very obvious need that they had offensively. I think to me, it's a trade that makes total sense yeah it's perfect it gives it gives a reboot to maybe Dez's career going out to the mm-hmm. desert but it certainly gives an opportunity for Rondo Moore to be more of a featured guy in an offense that's going to explode and going back to what you're talking about a little bit with the quarterback uh, lack of consistency mm-hmm. uh, saying it the best possible way I could right, say right. it um, when you begin to think about well, Matt Ryan you mentioned Matt Ryan and the stability Matt Ryan brought here but there was also a credibility to his words and a credibility to him saying, hey, we got to get back to work. There was a credibility that he had earned with his teammates mm-hmm. that transmitted to those guys to where they did get back to work and they did reapply themselves. Sometimes when you got a young player, no offense to the young player, but if he hasn't earned that credibility, then those words kind of fall down on deaf ears if you're, in fact, turning the ball over. You're making the mistakes. Matt Ryan throws a couple of interceptions and we lose a game. And comes back and says, "Hey, we got to get back to work. I did this, that, or the other, but we've got the, we've got the talent. He's done it before. That's what Kirk Cousins brings to the table. Mm-hmm. Kurt's done it before. He's been successful before. And so when he says something, but it's not going to be all rosy. We're not going to win as much as I like to say we're going to win 17 games this year. It's not going to go that way. Yeah. We're going to have some tough moments. But when Kirk says something in this locker room." Um, it's going to resonate because of the credibility. And I think that's going to be a big piece to helping Raheem get this team back on track or whatever he needs to do to get them practicing the following week after something that might not be very good. Yeah, and just to kind of last note to end on with this receiver room specifically, when you look at kind of the moves that they've made, they've got about four guys now under contract and they're getting to a good point of filling out that room. Is that still an area where you feel like 
go ahead and maybe look at some guys in the draft because I've been really looking at this wide receiver draft class. <laughs> it's a good one. I really like it. I like it a lot. I think it's really Do deep. you like it early? Do you like it early? I like it early. Do you like it early? I do. Yeah. I, well, my thing How is, could you not? Here's my thing. I don't know if I like it like first round, but yeah. I do. I think it is an incredibly deep group you. do you is that an area that you feel like okay even though they've made they've been making all these moves with this receiver room that there still are some intriguing draft options well too. I think it and it's certainly you know as well as I do and having followed as long as you followed it is that it, it kind of presents itself right it mm-hmm. kind of organically grows in that position you start looking up and here comes our second round pick and that guy and that guy and that guy we've got rated at the top of our board at that position right then yeah it makes sense mm-hmm. you know but you but the beauty of this is the signing of Ron, uh, uh, trading for Rondell Moore the signing of Darnell Moody mm-hmm. that changes whether you have to you don't yeah. have to do that right, right. now yeah. so if it's sitting there boom you but think about the versatility it gives you now as to what you want to do and is that the player you like is that where who's rated high on the board and, and then we'll take him if he's mm-hmm. not then hey we we've got some other guys that are rated pretty high we can go a different position right. so i think that it's cool what they're doing right now. That's gonna. It should make you, as a Falcon fan, feel really good about the fact that they've been able to address a couple of areas, quarterback, wide receiver, that were needy. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you look up and you say, okay, we got some depth there. We could still address it, but we could go a different direction too. I love it. It's going to be a fun off season. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down, taking a time, so a few minutes <laughs> to, to, be with to you. talk you? all about the quarterback and all about the news that we've had over the last – Gosh, it feels like two weeks, but it's been two days. Yeah. But thank you so much, Arch. Well, you missed you. You, you, you can't even tell that you haven't gotten any sleep. She is not. Look how good she know, looks. Like, she doesn't even get <laughs> got any sleep for two I weeks. Think I was here on Wednesday night until probably like a little after 11 o'clock <laughs> and then I went home and still wrote a like story like behind the scenes look at Kirk Cousins like first few hours as a Atlanta Falcon until like 1 2 o'clock in the morning back up here to go to have uh, Charlie Warner on a podcast like the next morning I mean she's a non-stop. warrior folks she's a warrior <laughs> she can do it oh thank you so much and guys check back in we have a lot of stuff coming for you